is Jesus. Holy, oh, worthy Lord, worthy, worthy, worthy Lord. Yeah. 
We're going to continue in this atmosphere of worship as we get ready to worship the Lord with our temporal needs. If you would like to give by the way of text, you can text the word GIVE to 248-368-0310. For those who are watching by way of live stream, if you'd rather just mail in your tithes, your offerings, our address is 14025 East 12 Mount, right here in the beautiful city of Ward, Michigan. This is a continuation of worship. And we're going to worship the Lord because he's blessed us. And this is the body of Christ. And it takes every member of the body. So we thank God that he's given us seed to sow. And that is what we are getting ready to do. And for those who are in the house, in just a moment, we're going to release you to come down and present your tithes and offerings at this altar. And as you lay your seed down, take a moment and pray over that seed. Because we thank God for what he's going to do with it. So for those who are at the house at this time, you can make your way down to the front and lay your offerings down and pray over them. It is a come at this time. Oh, 
worship with our Father. Amen. Before we get into the word of tonight, just a few brief announcements. If you don't know, we do have a Tuesday morning service here in the house at 11 a.m. Call it Tuesdays with Pat, so make note of that. If you want to come out and be a part of that, please, by all means, come out. And also, if you haven't done so, be sure to like the church Facebook page so that you can be up to date on all the things that are happening. If you missed out on any services, you'll be able to call on all of that. And also, Tuesdays through Friday at 7 a.m., we do have morning devotionals, so take time. They're going to be posted. So maybe you're not on that 7 a.m., maybe you get up a little later, so go back and watch up and get caught. And we're here on Wednesdays at 6.30. And on Sunday, we have our Sunday service at 11. We love to have meet you. So we can't meet you in person. Introduce yourself on social media. But we have a saying around here that if you're looking for a church, quit looking. That's right. Because we want you here. Amen. So tonight, we're continuing to our series with Nehemiah. And we're going to Nehemiah 6 tonight. Nehemiah 6. And tonight, I just wanted to share with you talking about adversity and the purpose of adversity. I know sometimes when adversity comes in our life, that's the last thing we want to think about is saying, well, what is a purpose? But there is a purpose for that. And so we're going to be reading in Nehemiah chapter 6, starting with verse 1. So we're going to read uh, quite a bit of chapter 6 so that we can get an understanding of what we're talking about on this evening. And I'm going to read out of the Good News Bible. It's really a user-friendly version, but for study, you know, King James will never put it wrong, but I want to understand so that you can get an understanding. I'm going to read from the Good News translation. And again, Nehemiah 6. And Samuel, Tobiah, Geshem, and the rest of our enemies heard that we had finished building the wall and that there were no gaps left in it. Although we still had not set up the gates and the gateways, so Sindelet and Geshem sent me a message suggesting that I meet with one of them in the villages in the plain of Ono. This was a trick of theirs to try to harm me. I sent messengers to say to them, I am doing an important work and can't go down there. I'm not going to let the work stop just to go and see you. Verse number four, they sent me the same message four times, and each time I sent them the same reply. Then Sambalai sent one of his servants to meet with a fifth message, this one in the form of an unsealed letter. It read, Geshem tells me that a rumor is going around among the neighboring peoples that you and the Jewish people intend to revolt, and this is why you are rebuilding the wall. He also says you plan to make yourself king and that you have arranged for some prophets to proclaim in Jerusalem that you are the king of Judah. His majesty is certain to hear about this, so I suggest that you and I meet to talk over, to talk the situation over. Verse number eight. I sent him a reply back. This is Nehemiah talking. None of, nothing of what you are saying is true. You made it up all yourself. Verse number five. They were trying to frighten us into stopping work. And it says, but I, but, but it says, I pray, but now God, make me strong. About this time, I went to visit Shemaiah, the son of Delel, the grandson of Metobal, who was unable to leave his house. He said to me, you and I must go and hide together in the holy place of the temple and lock all the doors because they are coming to kill you. Any night now, they will come to kill you. Verse number 11, Nehemiah once again answered. He said, I answered, I'm not the kind of person that runs and hides. Do you think I would try to save my life by hiding in the temple? I won't do it. When I thought it over, I realized that God had not spoken to Shemaiah, but that Tobiah and Samiah had bribed him to give me this warning. They frightened him to, they had hired him to frighten me into sinning so that they could ruin my reputation and humiliate me. Final verse, verse 14. I prayed 
God, remember what Tobiah and Sanballat have done and punish them. Remember that woman, Nodiah, and all the other prophets who tried to frighten me. And this is where we are talking tonight about the purpose of adversary. And we already know what, the, what we talked about in the previous chapters of how Nehemiah came to this place. And here it was, he's doing this great work. He's got the people working. And of course, right in the beginning, you had these three that were coming in to start some mess. And we have to understand, when we talk about adversity and all the different trials that come our way, when we are trying to do a work, when we're trying to steward what God has given us, because this year is we're talking about the stewardship of success. And of course, as we're doing the things of God, as the Lord has provided provision, and we see the Lord has given Nehemiah provision, he has given him favor to be at the very place that he's at. And from the get-go, these three were doing everything in their power to stop, to put a halt to the work. And so when we look at adversity, when we look at it, what it talks about in the Hebrew and the Old Testament, it, is, it talks about various forms of distress and evil that's conveyed by four Hebrew words. It is Tesla, a haunting, or a fall, to sorrow, straits, or distress. Star, straightness or affliction, wrong, which is bad, evil, or harmful. And so all of these words are conveying misfortunes caused by enemies that will try to raise sorrow and try to make trouble. So I don't know if it's ever happened to you when you're doing a work for the Lord. I don't know if you've had some standbys and some tobias that try to come up upon you and try to hinder your work. But even in those times, we have to see how we're going to view the situation and that there is a purpose for those times. And so when we look at the purpose of adversary, think about a time when you were doing work. Get it in your mind. And how was your initial reaction that came to be? What was your initial reaction? Because there is a purpose in the process. There is a purpose through the trial. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a work. It could just be everyday life that happens when adversary goes about you, when things are being trying to be your stumbling block, when someone is trying to throw fiery darts at you, and they're trying to make you their bullseye and make you your target. And we say the purpose and this trial and this adversity, but it's something that we need to look at. And number one, the purpose is, it is to draw us closer to the Lord. Now, when you're in that situation, you can you imagine Nehemiah is the project manager of this work. He is leading these people that were not doing anything for years. So he got the people motivated. He is leading these people. He had to get them out of there, do nothing. And from the beginning, he had to deal with these people that were coming after him. The purpose when we go through these different trials, the purpose of the adversity in all said and done, it is to draw us closer to the Lord. Now, that may be hard for some of us to grasp a hold of because all we, because the thing is, what we do is we're focusing on the situation. And if we continue to focus on the situation, you're going to have a hard time drawing close to God during those trials and tribulations. What made Nehemiah such a success? We already know. It's because he made the work in prayer. Even before he got to the place he was at, he had already prayed about the situation. So when the uh, when these three duos came after him and started to get him discouraged to try to hinder, to try to halt to work, because they, he had a mind, he was a man of prayer, he was able to continue without a beat. Adversity, what is it going to do? It's going to grab our attention. And they were, what the thing is, when it grabs our attention, what are we doing it? What is our attention being directed at during that adversity in your life? Nehemiah was not afraid of anything. He was not afraid of what they could do to him. He was not afraid of the taunts of the lies, of the darts, because he knew that he already prayed, said, God, in verse Nehemiah 1, what did he say? God, give me success. 
he had said, I said, Lord, this is your work. He was saying, I am just a conduit to do what you call me to do. And something happens when you have a mindset that said, my mind is set upon the Lord. When my mind is stayed upon him, meaning that my mind is focused upon him. My mind is nourishing, getting nourishment in his word. And it says the power, what we can do is the power of God will be manifested during those times of adversity. But you have to allow that to happen. You can't say, oh, woe is me. What are all these people doing to me? It's not about me. It's about him. And when we get our minds that, Lord, me, 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 Lord's like, I need you to do this work. You need to change your focus and get your focus and mindset and your eyes upon me. Yes, Nehemiah had his attention around, but immediately he knew what he had to do. He had to continue and go on and continue to do the work. And when they came and tried to put lies on them, and they were very conniving about it. How are you responding when the devil tries to come into your area of what God has given you dominion over, giving you stewardship over? They came five times. And that's just how the, you think the devil's just going to stop after one time and say, like, oh, they told me to leave me alone, so I'm just going to leave them alone right now. No, he's going to keep going and going and going and try to pick at you and pick at you until you crack. But no, what did Nehemiah do? And it said, he kept saying it over and over. He says, in verse, was I in verse number three, so he said, I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work. I can't kind of to be messed with your foolishness. Didn't say that, but I just added that in there. But why should the work stop while they come down to you? See, that's how the devil is going to do it. It's going to try to get you off track. What is your response going to be? Nehemiah says, I'm not messing with your foolishness. I'm not going to even bother with your nonsense talk. And that's what we have to get in our mind and learn how to do. When the trial, when the enemy comes in and says, no, I'm not going to entertain these thoughts. I'm not going to entertain what you're dangling before me. And that is what Nehemiah did. He shut it down each and every time. And so that is one thing. We, yes, again, it's going to grab our attention. But we have to focus when it grabs us. Say, Lord, this is trying to grab my attention. But God, I'm redirecting this back to you. I'm putting it all back onto you. So God, I'm taking my hands off of it. Hands off. And not saying, Lord, I'm going to lay it after the altar. And after church, what do you do? Pick it right back up and just kind of take it home with me. No. It is to leave it here at the altar. What chain is holding you down is to leave it wherever your altar may be. And says, I am not going to allow what adversity comes into my life. I'm not going to give it brain. It's not going to be a chain around my foot anymore. It's not going to be the monkey on my back. So we have to get into a mindset because this is our training ground. This is what God, we're getting deployed for action. So this right now is our spiritual place of we're getting exercise and we're being strengthened so that when it comes in, we know exactly how to respond. And our response should never say, no, devil, you are alive. You get out of here. You do not have dominion over which God has given me. And so what Nehemiah, because he was a man of prayer, he was built up. And one thing we know is that when you are going out to battle or going out into the fields or for everything like that, you're not going to go out basically without your weaponry. You're not going to go out unarmed. You're not going to leave yourself exposed. But you're going to have the word of God on. And it talks about putting on the full armor of God in Ephesians. That is a whole many months long series. But the thing is, this is what we have to do. In Ephesians 6, it talks about putting on the armor of God. And see, Nehemiah, because he was praying, he had the armor of God. So as the weapons from the enemy were trying to attack him, it was ricocheting back because, ha-ha, he had a covering. And we have to get a covering about ourselves and not just keep saying, oh, yeah, the word of God this, the word of God this. God is telling us what to do. We have 
have to put that thing into action. And so it says in Ephesians 6 and 10, finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord by the means of his mighty power. And it says, verse number 11, put on some, put on a piece. No, it says put on all, all the armor that God gives you so that you will be able to stand against the devil's evil tricks. For what, why? For we are not fighting against human beings, but against the wicked forces of in the heavenly world, the rulers, the authorities, the cosmic powers of the dark age. So verse 13, so put on God's armor now. Don't delay, put it on now. Because we're fighting against, we're doing spiritual warfare. And I believe that Nehemiah did war in chapter one. He went to God in prayer. He went and interceded, not knowing what was going to happen. But he knew that if he went in praying, that he was going to have a shield around him. He is our glory. He is our lifter. And God is our shield. So that when we go into places, we will not be distracted. We will not be knocked over because we are full of faith and we have the full armor of God on us. Put it on now. And it says in verse 14, so stand ready with truth as a belt tied around your waist with righteousness as your breastplate and your shoes, the readiness to announce the good news of peace. And at all, at all times, carry faith as a shield. For, it'll be, for with you, we'll be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one. And here, Nehemiah was able to shoot down every dart that came by the way of Samuel, Tobiah, and Geshem, everything that they tried. And when they couldn't try, they kept trying more and more and more again. And because they were trying to use fear and intimidation to stop them. And that's what it says in Nehemiah, verse number nine. And it says, but he said, what did he say in the latter part? He said, but now, oh God, strengthen my hands. See, what happens, what we have to do is strengthen our hands, Lord. I need you to strengthen me. Though I may not understand the purpose of this trial, there's got to be a great thing. Because you are going to get the glory through this situation and through it all. What we're going to do is that we're going to stand strong. And God wants us to understand that the purpose of this adversity is to let him know that he is God and he changes not. That he is God and he's never going to leave you. That he is God and he's never going to forsake you. It is something to draw you in, not for you to draw away. So when it comes in, when the devil comes to you, say, I'm going to get on my knees and go keep her in prayer. I'm going to get on my knees and intercede and set my face to God and say, God, I will not be moved. God, nothing is going to stop me because you kept me. This works. Just do it. There is a blessing in the adversity. And I know that for some right now, that may be a hard piece to grasp. The blessing. But Nehemiah was blessed. He was blessed in the end because he remained obedient and he remained faithful to the call. Even when they said, well, come over here, Nehemiah. Come over here, Nehemiah. We got to go into hiding. Another tool of the enemy, he wants you to hide. Because one thing he wants to do, he wants to try to extinguish that light. He wants to do everything that he can. He was saying, oh, you need to go hide. But Nehemiah said, should a man like me flee? He said, I will not go that route. Because he knew what he had to do. He knew the cost. He had to count the cost. Come on. And we have to realize that the cost, it may be great, all the, all the things, but the worth is what God is doing and the blessing and all that. It is something to get our attention, to focus back on him, to realize that he will take you through the storm. And that when you're on the other side, you're going to see there was a blessing. Because at the end of the storm, you're going to realize 
make you grow stronger within him. Nehemiah realized that fact, that he cultivated, that he nourished that thing in which that God had given him dominion over, that God had made him a steward over that. And he was successful because of all these different things, all these different tools, and he realized what he needed to do. It just really kind of seal you know, what we're talking about adversity and what we're built upon is important that our foundation is rooted and grounded into the word of God that we have to have strong roots so that when the wagons come and the winds blow that we're not going to be tipped away with the slightest wind now I want to read a story to you and maybe you've heard it or maybe you have not heard this story in a long time. But it really puts things in purpose. And the Lord works with me with every little thing. But maybe you heard this story when you were a kid, or maybe you read it to your grandkids or your children. I'm going to read it to you. And it says, I'm going to start, I'm going to probably read, read it both of it. Once upon a time, there lived three little pigs. The pigs lived in the small house with their mom. And one day, their mom sent them off to build houses of their own. They became stewards of their own houses. And as they walked down the road, the first little pig met a farmer pulling a cart of straw. It looked very warm, just right for building a house. He asked if he could have some. The farmer agreed. And the first little pig began to build his, his straw house. A little way down the road, the second little pig saw a woodcutter with a cart of sticks. They looked thick and long, just right for building a house. He asked if he could have some. The woodcutter agreed. And the second little pig began to build his wooded house. The third little pig trotted down the road. And after a short time, he met a builder pushing a wheelbarrow full of bricks. The third little pig thought to himself, how strong those bricks look. I think they will make an excellent house. So the third little pig asked the builder for some of his bricks, and he began to build a house that was stronger and built bigger than the others. Soon, all three pigs had a house of their own, and they were very happy. Then one day, do, 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 a big bad wolf came walking along the road. He saw the first little pig in his short house, and with an evil glint in his eye, he knocked on the first pig's door. He said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. He said, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. I will not let you cry the frightened little pig. Then I will huff, and I will huff, and I will blow your house down, growled the wolf. The wolf hurry, puffed, and he puffed, and he blew the straw house down. The first little pig ran all the way to his brother's wooden house. The wolf was sitting at the house, made of sticks. Once again, he knocked at the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, he snarled. Not by the hairs on our chinny chin chin. We won't let you in, the frightened, no frightened pigs. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, growled the wolf. Then the wolf puffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house down. The two little pigs ran as fast as they could all the way to their brother's brick house. The wolf was soon at the brick house, knocking on the door again. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Not by the hairs on our chinny chin chin, squeak the little pigs. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. He roared with their loudest voice. The wolf huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, and then that big bad wolf was very angry. He looked at the house and saw the chimney. As quick as a flash, he climbed up the roof and into the chimney. But the big bad wolf was in for a big surprise. The third little pig had been making soup. And there is a big pot of boiling 
soup on the fire. The wolf slid down the chimney and landed right in that soup. Splash! And with a howl, that foolish wolf jumped out of the pot and it ran out of the house. And that big bad wolf was never seen again. It's the foundation in which you were built on. The two pigs at the beginning, their foundation, that it looked good on the outside, but it had no strength. But that third pig, its house was made of bricks. And when that wolf tried to come in, it's like, uh-uh, you don't belong here. And let me tell you something. You get to tell that devil to get the hell out your house. You gotta be when they say, I'm gonna hump and I'm gonna pump and I'm gonna do everything. And he may try to open the door and he may try to pick his foot in. And you got to say, Get out. You don't belong here. You get out of my house. This is my house. It is about the foundation in which you're built on. You're not built on some petty straw. You're not built on some petty little pieces of pebbles. But God says, You are a strong foundation. And when you have these times of diversity, you gotta realize God has given you power. He's given you dominion to say, devil, you got to go. Devil, I'm not going to take, let you take dominion in what God has given me. And no matter how many times they may come, you respond to that with the word of God. And then thus said the word, thus said the Lord, that I'm going to go with the pool of faith and power that you've given me. And say, my dear, my Strengthen me, oh Lord. They're coming. But God, I know you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. Strengthen me now. There is a blessing in adversity when you see that God's going to win. That he, in the end, is going to carry you through the storm. How are you responding? How do you view when adversity comes? Say, Lord, thank you for it, because I know you got me covered all around. Let's stand to our feet as we get ready to close in prayer. The altars are open for those who are in the house if you need prayer. If you're online watching, you need prayer for anything, please let us know. We're here to pray with you. And as the Lord is answering those prayer requests, let us know so we can rejoice with you. Lord, we thank you for this time of worship in the Word. God, for every situation that we may be dealing with, maybe there are Tobias, Gashons, Sam Lots that are trying to get us off track. But God, let's take these lessons and key principles from Nehemiah that we will not be intimidated, that we will not be fearful, that no matter how many times they may come after us, God, we are going to stand upon your word. So God, right now, strengthen we your people, God. Lord, let us not give the devil an inch, and when he tries to open the door to our house, Lord, we're kicking him right out because he does not belong in what you have blessed us with, what you have given us, God. Strengthen we, your people, God. Thank you for all these many things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's spend some time worshiping the Lord, and we look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 11 a.m. God bless you. We love you. Good night.
I can't get the game up.